the best ever Sir Alex Ferguson's halftime team talk that changed the game. There was a time that we played in the Champions League um, and I think it was against Chelsea in the quarterfinals or semi-finals of the Champions League. And he never did this, but he got us all into a meeting in the hotel room um, on the morning of the game. And we thought, is he going to tell us the team? Are we going to talk tactics? And he basically went round and spoke to everybody and, and told the team how special he felt that the team were, uh, both individually and as a team. And he started telling a story about himself and when he was younger and how he grew to, to where he is now. Mm -hmm. And then he started talking about how in the future, when we get to 50 and 60 and 70 and we see each other again, the bond that we will have because of, of how, you know, when you go out onto the pitch and it's 11 v 11 and there's millions of people around the world, it's very intense, of course, and you're relying on your teammates around. You can't do anything on your own. And to go into battle, you know, at the, at the highest level against the best players with the highest pressure um, and to come out on top, that almost forms a bond between you all that will almost never be broken. And when you're in, in the future and you see somebody, you know, and, and you're walking past them in the street or see them, then you can actually look them in the eye and think, wow, he, he would have spilled blood for me on that, that, that night. And he rose to the occasion. He performed, you know, and, and he just went through a, a scenario. It was just the most emotional, I suppose, but just the most unbelievable team talk that made us all feel a real team before we went to play that game. So it wasn't half time, but it was, uh, it was probably the best team talk I've ever been involved in. Nice. I wish I was there though. <laughs> on that you know but your time at Manchester United do you feel that that rekindled a spark maybe from the teenage Michael at Liverpool yeah it's interesting Nick I mean it did it, it, it rekindled a real drive because of course playing in the, at the top level um, with all due respect I went to Newcastle for four years but we weren't you know we weren't challenging for titles and things like that and as I mentioned earlier I went to Newcastle almost as a sort of a bridging gap to go back to Liverpool um, you know, I'm sorry to say that in front of Newcastle fans, but that's life. That's exactly what it was. I wouldn't have gone to Newcastle unless I was guaranteed to go to Liverpool, Liverpool. from there. Um, so, yeah, to go back to a team that were, you know, that every single time you played, there was pressure every time. There's a, it's like a drug, that is. It's like, you know, I'd hate, I don't like playing when there's, it doesn't feel as if, you know, if it's to come 11th or 13th in the league, it's like... But to play every game and it's you've got a trophy at the end of it, you've got millions of people that support you, it, 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 there's a different buzz about it. So, yeah, I think it rekindled things mentally, Nick. But, of course, physically, I was, you know, coming to the end of my career slightly at, at Manchester United. So, physically, I was going through a change in my game. Um, so, you know, I wish it could rekindle my time so I could have been as good as I was earlier in my career. But, of course, I was changing as a player then, like we all have to. I mean, you talk about Manchester United. I remember growing up and watching Ryan Giggs and he used to go past everyone on the left wing and cross it in. But when I played for Man United, he never even played on the left wing. He was sort of central because he couldn't beat anybody for speed anymore. But he had such a good brain that he could play in the central area. Paul Scholes, he used to be a player that used to run forward, score loads of goals. Yeah. By the time I was at Man United, he basically played like a quarterback, just sat there in midfield, just passing it everywhere and dictating the game. So... We all change our body as we get older. And it's strange because it's only happens at 28, 29, 30. You think that's young. But in football terms, you're getting older then. You start going through a change and you have to sometimes reinvent yourself as a, as a new player. And that's what I had to do at Manchester United.